you know, I always encourage people to download my videos, share my videos. I don't mind if you make money, like advertising, etc. That's not, not the problem for me. Today our topic is about Al-Fatiha. You know, always we see the Muslims when uh, when they pray, they repeat Al-Fatiha. And you ask yourself, what does Al-Fatiha for? I mean, what Al-Fatiha mean? Al-Fatiha in Arabic mean the opening. But you know, Muhammad, he did not call it the opening. And this is not the first chapter Muhammad he received. So how that can be the opening? somebody is playing games for sure muslims they accuse everybody of corrupting their books but the fact as you see if you ask any muslim what is the first revelation muhammad received they will say to you Iqra. and even this one by the way didn't agree about it which one but generally speaking they say Iqra, which is chapter 96 so al-fatiha and you see here the man this man he have his finger up you're wondering what he is saying the Muslims, when they are dying, they put their finger up. When they are saying Shahada, they put their finger up. When they are praying, sometimes they put their finger up. And you wonder what kind of religion people they give finger to their God. Well, in their culture or their religion, according to their prophet, when you put your finger up, you are saying that Allah is one. However, Allah is one, Allah is two, that will not change anything. Allah is a stupid God and we prove it all the time. Allah, you know, here is just Muhammad making up a statement claiming that God, his name is Allah, which is an ancient God. And the Arab, even the Mushrikeen, the Muslim, they call the tribe of Muhammad Mushrikeen, which means people who associate with God. You will notice that those pagan, they worship Allah too. So there's no difference between the Muslims and before Islam is the same. Both they worship Allah. And putting your finger up to Allah does not make him one. And doesn't mean anything because you need to prove to us that Allah is one. If we go in the Quran, and today our topic is chapter of Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha means the opening, and as we said, and you can check with any Muslim, or you can search in Prophet Google, peace be upon him, what is the first revelation Muhammad you receive? You will see Google give you an answer, says Iqra, which is a chapter 96 in the Quran. So chapter 96, which is number one, supposedly should be, suddenly become number 96 in the Quran. And the funny is the Muslim, they say, we preserve the Quran. And the Quran itself says that those who change the location of words from their places, they are doing corruption. As we see in the screen, according to the story, a Jewish man, he put his finger over the Torah, a line in the Torah. And by doing that, he changed, he tried to change the location of words, you know. Chapter 4, verse number 46, it says, among those who are Jews, there are some, some, not all, who displace words from their right places. And that is corruption. The word here, yuharifun, is what corruption is meant for. So if you displace words from their location, you are doing corruption for the book of God. And if you read the story, you will see the Jew only, he put his finger over the Torah line, which is speaking about stoning to death. And according to Muhammad, that is a scam. That is a cheating. That is not right. That is corruption. But look what happened. The story here, by the way, doesn't make sense because Muhammad don't speak Hebrew. So how he knew that he is hiding the verse by his finger? The story, all of it, obviously is a fabrication of the fabricator who is following a fabricator. His name is Muhammad. But if we go back to the Quran, chapter 96 is nine, number one. And if you change the location of verses or words from their places, that is a corruption according to chapter 4, verse number 46. So Muslims immediately, they have to agree that they corrupted their book because 96 is number one, not 96. Who are you 
to make it and move it. If Allah gave it to you in the beginning, how it become at the end of the Quran. And then you will see here in chapter 96, something very weird. In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate, which is very weird. And you will notice there's no number one next to that. Number one start here. So the Muslims are adding lines to the Quran, which is not part of the Quran. And the funny is they say, we will never add a word. We will never take a word. But as you see, the whole line is not even part of the Quran. This is why it's not counted and it's not number one. Then if we go to chapter Al-Fatiha, which is a topic today, chapter one, which is not a chapter one, you will see they are copying what is mentioned here and they are putting it in chapter 96. Here we ask ourselves, did Allah forget to mention his name, Ar-Rahman? Chapter number one says, Al-Fatiha, which is the opening, which is not the opening, which means the Muslims, they add that word, Al-Fatiha, later, to make it the opening when it is not the opening. Because this is not what Allah, he gave Muhammad to open the recitation of the Quran with. As we see, it was Iqra, which means read. And that statement is very funny and very stupid because Muhammad did not know how to read. So why Allah will say to him, read? A smart Muslim, he says here, the word Iqra means recite. That even more stupid because if you say to somebody recite, how he can say, I cannot recite when he just said the word, which is recite. You did recite already by saying recite. So chapter of Al-Fatiha is not authentic. It's not the true name. This is a name the Muslims, they added as a fabrication. Then if we go and read together, you will see before we spoke about the name of Allah, if you remember, you can watch a previous video. Allah is not one word. Allah is two words, Al and La. And this is why in verse number two, we will see it says, Alhamdulillah, not Allah. You will notice that the words are not looking the same, even if you don't speak Arabic. You will notice differences. The first word here have a letter. And let me try to highlight for you so you can notice it in case you don't speak Arabic. Uh, if we look here, and let us zoom in a little bit. You will notice in the front of this word, in the beginning, there is this letter. I will put a dot underneath of it. Here, it's not exist. When the Muslim read the first cha the first uh, uh, verse, they say, Bismillahi, Bism, and Bism, by the way, is wrong, because there is no such a thing in Arabic. So the Muslims, in order to make recitation right, or let us say easy, they took the letter Alif from the word, and that is a corruption. Are you fixing Allah words just to recite it? So Allah, he say, be ism, you say bism, and you change the language. So be ism, not bism, be ismillahi, Allahi, and then what here happening? Alhamdulillahi, li is a word mean, or letter mean to. La is the name of the God of Islam. So the part of the God of Islam name is here, not all of it only the last two letters, la. And you will notice here with me, uh, when the Muslims, they speak of the name of their God, and they say Allah, suddenly here Allah is not Allah, is li la, because li, which hamd, uh, like speak good of him, tu la, speak good of la. The Muslim translation is very funny. I don't approve any Muslim translation, as you know. But we will use it for the purpose of exposing Muslim false translation. In the name of Allah. If you look at the title I have, it says it doesn't make sense. Why? Well, if Allah is talking, how in the world he say in the name of Allah? 
I am talking, I'm a Christian prince. I will not say in the name of Christian prince. People will laugh at me. That will be silly. Only stupid people, maybe like Joe Biden, they will say in the name of Joe Biden, because this guy, he forget who is he. So the Muslims, you ask them, how and why Allah is saying in the name of Allah? The Muslim right away, they will say to you, Allah is saying to us, say in the name of Allah. But where it says, say, nowhere to be found. In the Quran, there's tons of verses where Allah, he said to Muhammad, say. So, which mean, if Allah did not say, say, well, he did not say, say. So why you are adding things is not there. So, if we go in the Quran, and we search for the word say, we will find tons of it. This is the word say in Arabic. Qul, 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 qul. All, all those verses, all those chapters, Allah saying, say, 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 say. You see all the yellow one? Qul, 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 qul. So in order to make this chapter correct, that Allah saying to the Muslims, say, he should add that word. And if Allah, he added all over the place, why he did not add it here? Simply Muslims cannot answer. And you know, one of the funny verses uh, uh, we see uh, in the front of us in the screen, it says uh, that Allah is asking those who don't believe in him to bring a proof. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the funny things that Muslims, if we ask them, I, I saw once, well, once a video of a Christian brother, he is from Pakistan, uh, a Muslim, he asked him, are you going to prove to me that Jesus is God from the Bible? What is your proof? The Christian brother, he did not answer in he, what he should answer. You should say to him, don't you Muslims, you say, what is the proof of Allah? Uh, no one about Jesus, you will say the Quran. But the Quran is one man person. There's no witnesses. There's nobody. No, nobody saw Muhammad seeing anyone. He never even spoke to Allah, according to Muslims. Here you will see in chapter 2, verse 111, it says, they say, none shall enter paradise unless he is a Jew or a Christian. Well, this is their wishful. They are making a wish. Say to them, bring your proof if you are right in your claim. Hey, Muslims, can we do the same to you? Prove to us that you will go to heaven if you are right. As the Quran says the opposite. And now we are asking you, if Allah in chapter 1, which is not a chapter 1, Allah saying say, will give us the proof where he says say. So how this chapter makes sense doesn't make sense because Allah should not say in the name of Allah unless there is a word here say say in the name of Allah which means Allah teaching you how to pray but Allah did he forget to say the word say so I advise you to add it to make more sense of this chapter which is not even a chapter so in the name of Allah and then you will see the Muslims here trying to deceive us with a translation saying the most beneficent the most merciful but if you go to the words here, you see Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim is the same word. Ar-Rahman is description of the one who uh, is a merciful. Ar-Rahim is description of somebody. He is a mercy. Or he is, you know, who, say, who uh, he give mercy. Or he do mercy. Merciful act. So both of them is the same. So the Muslim is in order to avoid the embarrassment. So he said, in the name of the beneficent, the most merciful. But nowhere here it says most, and nowhere it says beneficent. Both of them saying Rahman and Rahim, which mean merciful, merciful. But because that does not make sense, so the Muslim, they have to add different translation for the verse by saying the most beneficent, which is very silly to say. And then you will notice Allah saying all praise and thanks to Allah. This is the Muslim translation, by the way, which I don't approve, but I will go with it just for the sake of the exposure. Why Allah want to say all praise and thanks to Allah? And Allah, as you see, did not say to the Muslims, pray to me like this. Like, you know, when the Christian they asked Jesus how to pray, he said, say, speak like this, our Father out of heaven. So, like this, like that, pray like that. Here, Allah never said this is a prayer to pray. Allah never says say and repeat after me. Allah never says 
This is a prayer for all Muslims. And supposedly Allah is speaking to who? To Allah, not to the Muslims. If you read carefully, you will see, in the name of Allah, who is the audience? The Muslim, they will say to you, this is the Jibreel, the angel is speaking to Muhammad. Well, now that makes more sense, but that make the Quran is the word of Jibreel, not the word of Allah. So Jibreel is saying in the name of Allah, because Jibreel is not Allah, that makes sense. The Muslim, they say, no, 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 no. Jibreel is just a delivery person. He don't speak, he don't make Quran, he speak Quran, which means he recite the Quran to Muhammad. So Allah, he tell him, go, this is the Quran you have to deliver. Jibreel, he go to Muhammad, he say to him, whatever he want to say to him, because Allah is the one is talking. Jibreel is just a voice of delivery. So if Jibreel is not talking, he is just reciting the words. This is not his own words. And Allah is talking. That is very stupid. It doesn't make sense. And obviously Allah is speaking to other God. And in the name of other God, maybe, maybe Allah, he have a higher God than him. Maybe there's many Allah. In the same time, if Allah is a Rahman, a Rahim, why this name did not appear in the beginning of, the, of Islam? In the beginning of Islam, there is no Allah, a Rahman, a Rahim. There is, if you go right now, if we search in front of you, when the first time the word Rahman appear, you will find the Quran itself exposed. The answer, you know, there's tons of chapters in the Quran, and we try to find, like, as we showed you, the Quran, uh, as uh, the Muslims is adding in chapter 96, verse number one, it doesn't say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, it doesn't say in the name of Allah, but the Muslims, they added there, if you remember. Uh, but we will notice later, the Muslims, the, the Arab, they ask Muhammad, why you are calling your God ar-Rahman? Where this name is coming from? Muhammad, he says, all beautiful names belong to Allah. So I call him Rahman or I call him different name. It doesn't matter. Chapter 17, verse number 110. If you go and read the interpretation for this verse, you will see that Arab, they ask him Muhammad, how come suddenly you are calling him a Rahman? He never called him a Rahman before. Why his name now is a Rahman? So if Allah, he speak in the name of Allah, a Rahman, a Rahim, well, this should be appear from the beginning of Islam, not at the end of Muhammad life. You know, uh, if we ask Muslims, chapter 17 in the Quran, as you see, this is chapter 17. When this chapter happened, chapter 17, Isra, mean the time or the, the journey of Muhammad. Muhammad, he claimed that Allah, he sent him a mule, have two wings, and he took him to the seven uh, heaven, and uh, a very funny, stupid journey, and no witness for it as usual. And, you know, when you have no witness, you have no crime, you know, and nobody can prove you wrong or right. So, uh, all this time, Muhammad never, never, ever said the word Ar-Rahman. But if we go and search in the Muslim website, you can go right now and search. Quran, according to Revelation, you will see that the first, uh, uh, or the real number of Al-Isra, which is a chapter, chapter number 17 in the Quran today, or most of the Quran today, in the According to Muslims, in the original Quran, chapter 17 was a chapter 50. Chapter 50. All the Quran is 114 chapters. So half of the life of Muhammad is gone. And yet Muhammad did not mention the name of his God. Never mention it as a Rahman. If we ask Muslims why, well, good luck with that. 
you are asking people who do not know anything about the religion. If you ask the scholars, they will say the scholars agree about not to agree about the reason. Always Muslims to avoid any question which is an embarrassment for this cult. They say Allah knows best. And for sure Allah knows best. Who knows better than Allah? Are you kidding me? He knows best always, which is very laughable. Uh, Allah who knows best. Allah who knows nothing. Allah who cannot explain. Allah who forgot to mention that his name is Ar-Rahman to Muhammad. And then suddenly we find that Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim is in all, uh, every chapter almost except Al-Tawbah. Al Everywhere you open the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. But then we don't find that until chapter 17, which is a chapter 50, as you see. Let me zoom on the screen so you can see with me. This is a Muslim website. It's called tanzil.net. Let me show you the address. So you will see this is a very Islamic website. This is not my website. Tanzil.net document slash revelation order. So the title is you can search revelation order Quran according to revelation. You will find this website or any other website. Doesn't matter. So we will find that the chapter 17 is chapter number 50. And then very simple question. Why does God he did not say to Muhammad, his name is Ar-Rahman. Why does God, he never even speak of himself as Ar-Rahman? Why he was hiding the name? It doesn't make sense. If we go and read the stories behind it, we will find that there was a false person, supposedly a false prophet, he sent a messenger, a message to Muhammad, and he called himself, the guy he called himself, Ar-Rahman. So he said to him, in the name of Ar-Rahman, this guy, he called himself Ar-Rahman, and he called his God Ar-Rahman. Muhammad, he liked the name. And then he took the name and he put it in his book. Can you believe it? This guy is a professional thief. No dignity, I mean, like a thief in public. If you go and read, there is a book, it's called Asbab al-Nuzul, which means translation, the reason for the verses to come down. Asbab al-Nuzul. Chapter 17, verse number 110, which is, this is the Muslim website from the kingdom of, Saud, uh, of, of Jordan. And as you know, the king of Jordan, he claimed to be descendant from Muhammad. That explained why he is a very extremely corrupt person, like his grand grandfather, if he is really. But I believe Muhammad have no kids. Even the Quran confirmed that. But look at this here. The Arab, they said to Muhammad, the idolaters, the Muslim, they call them the idolaters. As, as I'm supposed to, the Muslim are not idolaters. The black stone kissers, they call other people idolaters. They said to Muhammad, Muhammad used to call into Allah, one Allah, and now he is calling into two God, Allah and Ar-Rahman. Do you see it? And then they continue saying, we do not know anyone by the name of Ar-Rahman except Rahmanul Yamama. Rahmanul Yamama is a person he claimed to be a prophet, and Muhammad, he killed him at the end. Muhammad, he stole the name from him. 50 chapter pass, and the name Rahman never ever appear in the book of Muhammad. And then if we go in the Quran, we will find the name Ar-Rahman, which is first time appear here. This is why Muhammad explaining. Allah said to him, answer them. Answer them, answer them. They are saying to you, well, the only Rahman we know is the guy Rahmanul Yamama, and you, you are obviously you are taking the now you are worshiping to God, 
You are worshiping the God of Rahman? So Muhammad, he answered them saying that Allah told him to say, and this is why we see here the word say. Do you know this? Say, قُلْ Say, Muhammad. For sure the word Muhammad is not there. I invoke Allah or invoke Ar-Rahman. It doesn't matter what I invoke. For all the beautiful, sexy names belong to Allah, which is very funny and very stupid. Because how they are names and how they belong to Allah. You see, names is not the same as attribute. Names is names. I can say this person is a great king, but this is not his name. I can say he is decent, but this is not his name. I can say he is wonderful, but this is not his name. I can say he is a scam, but this is not his name. So even the answer of Muhammad is very stupid, very, very, you know, uh, like it's showing you how, how, how naive the answer, how silly. This is going to be from God. All names belong to Allah. Well, if this is a name important to Allah, how come after that suddenly all this name is appear everywhere? Everywhere, everywhere. If you remember, just to remind you, a Jewish woman, she came to Muhammad, wife. And she spoke about the punishment of the grave. She spoke what? Of the punishment of the grave. Aisha told of a Jew who visited her and mentioned the punishment of the grave, adding, May God preserve you from the punishment of the grave. Aisha, she asked the Messenger of Allah about the subject. He said, yes, the punishment in the grave is real. Aisha, she said, after that, I never saw Allah Messenger observing the prayer without seeking God protection from the punishment of the grave. So Muhammad never, 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 ever before mentioned it. A Jewish woman, she came by, she mentioned it, suddenly Muhammad, he cannot even pray once without speaking, asking God, Allah, for protection. He's terrified from it now. So if Muhammad is a prophet and the prayer is, to Allah should include the punishment of the grave. Why the prayer for this punishment never come until the Jewish women she mentioned it. So Muhammad never mentioned it. He never know it. He heard the Jewish women, which is a fiction that Jews believe in that you are in the grave now and you are going to be punished for it. Actually, Aisha and this woman, they were even fighting and their voice go loud because Aisha, she said to her, that's that be true. What are you talking about? Punishment of the grave. So Muhammad, he went out of his room and he heard two, the, the two women are arguing about it. So Muhammad, he told her, well, yeah, she told the truth. There is a punishment of the grave. And since then, Muhammad never, never, never stopped praying, asking Allah from the punishment of the grave. And this is exactly what happened here in the chapter of Al-Fatiha which is not the true name of it. The Muslim fabricate such a name. Muhammad, he added Ar-Rahman as a theft. And then suddenly, we go and open the Quran, we will find the name all over. If we go to chapter 2, in the name of Allah, the most beneficent. But look what happened. It's not even in the numbers. This is a chapter two, which means never, never mentioned. Allah never mentioned to Muhammad that his name is Ar-Rahman. Suddenly, Allah, his name is Ar-Rahman. As you see, 
after speaking almost for half hour, I don't know how long I'm here now, we did not even cover the first line of Muhammad nonsense chapter. He is a thief and a thief who is not educated. He still names he do not know what they mean. He say things he do not know what for. He heard the Christian say Mary is a virgin. Okay, Mary is virgin, but virginity of Mary does not make any sense in Islam. Because why? If this is a miracle, well, nobody can prove it to be true or not. My mother, your mother can, pr can claim that she was a virgin before she gave birth to you. After giving birth, you are not virgin no more. How you can prove the virginity? It makes sense only in Christianity, for Jesus is a son of no man. Muhammad, as usual, is a thief. The same as he stole, stole the story from, of the ant, speaking ant, with Solomon from the legion of the Jews, and tons and flying carpet and flying horse and all the garbage the Jews, they, they teach their, their, their kids, you know, uh, about. Muhammad, he took it for granted. He did not know that those are just fabulous. They are just fairy tale stories. And he put it in the Quran for granted. And today we covered only one verse of the chapter of Al-Fatiha. And later we will see how stupid Muhammad is because he repeat the same thing again. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Will you just say the Rahman Ar-Rahim here? You see, when somebody repeat himself, obviously he have nothing to say. What do you mean Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim? Didn't you just say here Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim? Why I need to say it again? It doesn't make sense. This guy is just trying to make a rap. And even the rap did not work. Because look, here it ends with letter meme, meme which means M, like mountain. This one, he it, it ends with letter N. <laughs> Then Muhammad, he could not find word to put here to go back to M. So he said exactly the same sentence he said in verse number one. To end what he just started with the same letter. And then, you know, maybe we should make a special, uh, a special uh, video to show you how Muhammad, he make a rap. You see, in Arabic, you can make any word, any word end with ya, noon, ya, and n, any word, anything, and all the Quran is a mix of that. You will see ya, n is all over because Muhammad. He have a very bad skills of language. Very silly. Doesn't make sense. Allah say in the name of Allah. Allah, he prays Allah. Allah, he thanks Allah. Allah, he forgot to mention his name, Ar-Rahman. Until 50 chapter, which means half of the life of Muhammad is gone as a prophet, as self-acclaimed prophet. Yet, he never ever mentioned the name of his God as Ar-Rahman. Until the guy Ar-Rahman, he sent him a letter saying in the name of Ar-Rahman. Muhammad, he starts saying in the name of Ar-Rahman too. I'm not going to keep you long. Leave your comment if you care. If you don't care, who care? For me, I do my part. And the rest is for the Lord to judge. We are here to expose the lies and the liars and the truth is what they fear the Lord he said read the books and read the books does not mean just read read means study search research and you will find the truth and the truth will set you free so we pray that what we do today will set the Muslim free the Christian free from any deception 
for there's many deceivers into this world. As we speak today, there's many people walking in the street almost naked because of hollow, hollow brain. Don't be like them. Use your brain. Don't be hollow. If you want to have fun, I believe education is the best way to enjoy life. The only thing stay with you until the time of death is knowledge. Your beauty will not stay there. Your hair will be gray. You will grow older. Your strength will go. But what about wisdom? Knowledge and wisdom, they go together. The Bible says, my nation destroyed because of their ignorance. So don't be the ignorant fool who a foolish like Muhammad fool you. And if a fool like Muhammad fool you, how foolish are you? Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And this is your brother, Christian Prince, who is serving you humbly, humbly for today. Take care. expose the lies of Muhammad and learn how to be tough on this God and tough mean to be bold to say it as it is not as they want not politically correct being politically, politically correct is an illness is a weakness if somebody is hiding something, they've been forced to say something. So if you are a Christian, say things as it is. Yes, we love the Muslims, but it doesn't mean we will let the Muslim die and go to hell. Loving the Muslims is saving the Muslims. It's not the opposite. So when somebody, he says to you, uh, that you are speaking rude, this is not how a Christian should be speaking. A true Christian is the one who say things as it is, and that will make it truth for sure.